Mike, uh, Mike Ramos, does this mean that people who yeah. have been convicted on, you know, f and sent to longer uh, sentences, three years and more for some of these drug crimes, are they going to be just let out of prison now? Yeah, there's going to be thousands, and, and it really concerns me. In my county alone, we have somebody that's in prison now for uh, assault and attempt uh, a voluntary manslaughter on a peace officer, two counts. Uh, and he continued to commit crimes and, you know, continue to, to have controlled substances and drugs. And he was caught with methamphetamine. He was uh, sent to, to, to prison to serve that time because of his, his violent background. This person will now be eligible to be released as a misdemeanor with no controls. And my concerns, again, are for the safety of the public. And it's not just drugs we're talking about. We're talking about theft crimes. You could go out and steal a handgun now. And if it's under $950, that's only a misdemeanor. So I understand drug treatment. I truly believe in that. But I think this initiative was the wrong approach. And I think well, we're, we're going to pay real close attention to it. Don't get me wrong. My colleagues across the state of California, we will try to make this work with the, our, our protection of our victims out on the streets in the state of California. But again, as vice president of the National DA's Association, I know this is a trend coming across the United States of America. And we, the DAs, should be at the table when we're trying to fix this whole area of sentencing. Mike Romano, uh, this Proposition 47, as I understand it, was called the Safe Neighborhoods and Schools Act. How does it make neighborhoods and schools safer? Well, first of all, I want to respond to something that D.A. Ramos said. First of all, nobody gets out of prison under 47 without a judge saying that they are no longer a threat to public safety. So first of all, we're only releasing people who are no longer threats to public safety. And we're only shortening their sentences a relatively short amount. So these are people who are already coming back into the community and who um, we're going to have to handle one way or another. The reason why Proposition 47 uh, enhances our schools and our neighborhoods is because it directs the savings from these long prison sentences that have been proven and all the evidence shows that these long sentences do nothing to improve public safety and it directs those savings into the schools, into victim services and into treatment for mentally ill and drug addicted people. So Proposition 47 actually does two things. It reduces these unfair and unjust sentences and it also directs those savings into treatment programs to hopefully reduce crime. And we've been doing this for two years in California already and so far it's been extraordinarily successful. As I think Mr. Ramos knows, Proposition 36, which changed the three strikes law, has released people who would, he would even think were more dangerous and yet they've been coming out and have record low recidivism rates. So I think we have a good record in California in being able to identify nonviolent people people who can be released safely from the community and put them into the reentry and drug treatment programs and mental health services that they well, desperately need. All right. and the but Joe Schrank, I mean, it, by reducing some of these penalties, aren't you saying to people, oh, go ahead and use drugs. It's, it's not a big deal. Society doesn't care. I think that one of the fundamental problems with this is that it presumes that by criminalizing these things that people use less. They do not. This doesn't do it. Engaging them in treatment, treatment works. Recovery works. Those, it's a huge savings to the taxpayer when somebody is stable in their mental health and in their addictive behavior issues. So having them go to jail or with a threat of jail, it might motivate them in the short term, but it doesn't keep them off these substances in the long term. It really doesn't make any sense. It's actually the, the distilled spirits lobby that holds all of this hostage because they want to have their continued monopolization on legal intoxication. And it's just not right. It's bad policy to incarcerate people with health issues. Well, it's, it's a, an interesting experiment. We'll keep an eye on it and see how it works. Maybe we'll have you all back to discuss it again in a year or so. Joe Schrank, Mike Ramos, Mike Romano, thank you for being here today. Thanks for having me. Thank, thank you. you. You know, I wonder if the people who voted for that proposition knew what it was really all about. That title you just mentioned? You do have to. Well, you know, I... I I think everybody wants safe schools and neighborhoods, Certainly. but, but then did you they get know that. what they were really voting for? Exactly.